Good evening. Welcome to Living Room Talk. Some thoughts on issues and events that you might be thinking about too. My name is John Graham, adventure activist, former diplomat, more at johngraham.org, and then a memoir, Sit Down Young Stranger on Amazon. Tonight's topic, In Memoriam, The Grand Old Party. It was inevitable, I think, that right-wing loonies would cry fraud in the California election that kept Governor Gavin Newsom in office. Never mind that Newsom won by two and a half million votes, or roughly two-thirds of those cast. Even before the polls opened on election day, Newsom's opponent, Trump wannabe Larry Elder, contended without a shred of proof that there were already millions of fraudulent mail-in ballots. And former President Donald Trump, never bypassing an opportunity to sabotage democracy, also screamed foul, asking before the vote, does anybody really believe the California recall election isn't rigged? <laughs> How could Trump resist? The California recall election was a great opportunity for the liar-in-chief to keep the pot bubbling under his false, mindless, cynical claims that he won the 2020 vote. A relentless campaign that so twisted too many American minds that 70% of Republicans still say that Biden didn't win. Never mind that they are overwhelming, incontrovertible, relentlessly triple-checked investigations that show that he did. You have to give Trump and his acolytes credit. They're the most powerful and one of the best educated countries on earth. He's managed to create an alternative universe in which, for many people, truth and facts are no better than any individual's opinion, no matter how completely uninformed that opinion might be. How could this be happening? Why has Trump's defeat done so little to return this country to its senses, to restore truth and expertise as viable concepts, and to dispel the existential danger that Trump still represents to the Constitution's mandate for free, fair, and binding elections? Trumpism has captured one of the country's two major political parties, turned most of that party's leaders into abject unethical toadies. It has collected a massive war chest to fuel an inevitable attempt by Trump to regain the presidency in 2024, as well as to influence dozens of down-ballot races. Despite being kicked off major social media platforms, still commands, Trump still commands a huge following, and his inflammatory rhetoric keeps promoting the big lie of his imaginary win in 2020. He's also fueling the potential of more political violence. Relentless investigations now show that January 6th was a much closer call than most people think. And most of the traitorous thugs behind that attempt are still out there, ready to do the master's bidding whenever he should call. How is this happening? Look first at the politics. Today's Republican Party may be led by abject and unethical toadies. But that doesn't mean that they're stupid or crazy enough to believe the imbecilic lies on which the cult of Trump depends. Most of them understand Trump lost the election and that his lies and conspiracy theories are nonsense, but they're also smart enough to do the math. Demographics clearly show that if Republicans depend on their aging white male electoral base, they're going to lose a lot of elections, especially at the national and statewide level. So they're left with two possible choices. They can try to broaden their electoral base, and they can use their power in state legislatures to depress the votes for their Democratic opponents. Choice one. Polls consistently show that Americans as a whole favor policies promoted by the Democratic Party on issues voters care about including gun control, immigration, inequality, child poverty, education, infrastructure, and even, yes, abortion. 
Republicans have traditionally offered conservative alternatives to Democratic positions on all these issues and have fought hard and often successfully to promote them. To broaden their base within a national electorate, Republicans could now revive that strategy, fighting for what they want within the boundaries set by the Constitution. Now they aren't going there. That's the land of rhinos, Republicans in name only to today's Republican Party and its base of fervent, die-hard Trump voters. Be moderate, negotiate compromises with the opposition, and you will be challenged in a primary by a Trumpista who will take your seat. To keep the base commanded by Donald Trump, the R's have to provide red meat, not moderation, and certainly not the kind of compromises that successful legislation demands. Hence the lies, conspiracy theories, pep rallies full of shouted nonsense, and the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Never mind responsible legislative work to lead the nation forward. Let's lie and shout and threaten. Choice two is simply to cheat using tools like gerrymandering and voter suppression to make it as difficult as possible for Democratic-leaning voters to vote. If you can't get votes from the majority, just make sure the majority can't vote. To counter elections in red states to suppress the Democratic vote, Democrats must pass as strong a version of a new Voting Rights Act as they can get through their own caucus. Since no voting rights, voting rights legislation can get 60 votes in the Senate, this passage will probably be where the inevitable weakening of the filibuster must begin. But let's not get lost in the swamp. Having a responsible conservative party is a good thing for a democracy. It worked in the years when the United States prospered and was a strong presence in the world, years of civil disputes and collaborations between the parties for the common good of the nation. Look, I've been a Democrat my whole voting life, but I miss the grand old party. A toast, my friends, to rhinos and the good things that came from the respectful battles that two great political parties waged over many a decade, taken all together, I think the results produce some pretty good policy choices for the nation. Sure, I was mad at the Republican opposition most of the time, but now all that responsible political battling looks like the good old days. <laughs> That's it for now. Thanks for watching. Please share this message widely.